good morning everybody from the Okanagan. Let's see if we can't get this show started. So today it's all about the acrylic pour. So let me just mount my camera and we will get going. Hi Peggy, good morning. Let's just do this. Good morning, Diana. I'm just getting my camera set up here. And if you'll just give me a minute, I will just bring it up on my laptop. So how's everybody doing today? I have to tell you, I am so super tired. I got back from Prince George at midnight on Sunday, I had an early morning Monday and um, yeah, it's just been go, go, go. I have my Facebook live this morning and then I also have um, my class to teach tonight. I'm uh, just going to turn my camera around because it does not want to cooperate as usual. Uh, tighten this up, wind my fingers. Okay, give me a second here while I just tighten this up. Let's come right off the base. So, how's everybody doing? I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. I do want to take this moment to say thank you to every, every single body that joined me in Prince George. All the way from Vanderhoof, Dawson Creek, um, Quinnell, met some lovely, lovely people. It was a busy weekend. I don't know how many projects we did. Um, we did so many. Um, again, please just mind my hands and everything because I get going here. Okay. Hi, Terry. Hi, Terry. You're here today. Let me turn this around. You're here today. Hi. I can't remember, Terry, if you're coming tonight. Uh, I think you're on my list. Let me just check. <gasps> no, you're not coming tonight. Um, hi. Hi, Rachna. How are you today? So today what we're going to be doing is just going back to basics. Um, I actually have my acrylic pour class starting on Saturday with the city. So that will be five weeks of fun acrylic pouring. Uh, hi, Janet. And um, so Janet, I'm just on my Pipart account and I have my class starting on Saturday. So I thought, why not just do a little bit of a teaser of what can be expected and the fun stuff that we can do. So had a couple of samples here to show you. Now, these are just done on, hi Terry, these are just done on a um, basic tile that you can get for us here in Canada, just at the um, ReStore. And I just tape off the backs with a little bit of wax paper to protect the backs, because what I like to do is I do do a lot of gifting with these, so, for me, having the back um, clean when I take the tape off is important. I also like to um, do them in a set of four and do four different types of pores in the same color combination, which that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, I also like to cover my um, backs with cork, which I'll show you. So this is a com combination of magenta purple and white this is one type of pour that we'll do today these are the exact same colors um, in a different pour again exact same colors poured differently and another way of doing it exact same colors poured differently so as you can see 
you can use the same colors but you're going to get totally different effects so these are actually covered with a resin i like to cover them with a resin um especially when gift giving because i feel that if people are going to put something hot on there i don't want it to stick um here's some more color combinations uh one of my favorite color combinations a little bit of uh magenta that looks purple some teal and white and this is how i just like to finish off the backs i just like to put down a self-adhesive cork so that people can put them down on their furniture thank you janet so there's two more so these have a set of two more um, to make it a set of four um, here's another one that's cork this is another set done in browns so these are just my sample pieces but i always still do four of each i just want to show you a couple of them to give you some color combinations uh, here's another red white and yellow so it all depends on your home decor or if somebody's commissioned me to do them a set of coasters what kind of colors they're looking for and uh, i like this one it kind of is like a moody stormy sky um, this is purple blue and a gray so no white in this one um, they didn't want white so this is usually my practice pieces which actually turn into coasters for me now as you can see these are solid and they are very very um, shiny that is the resin and you want to use a good resin if you want to put hot stuff on this there are some resins that will remain a little bit tacky if you get something hot on them now these are samples where um, this is what happens to the backs if you don't cover them so these are just my practice sample practice samples i use these when i'm doing um, getting ready for class and i'm practicing and uh, these don't have a resin so they're not as shiny but i do have a metallic paint in there so it has a little bit of shine okay and then we're doing back to basics we're just going to do four different types of pores this is not a back to basic pour this one it has no resin on it this is done on a longer tile uh, a practice pour for my class um this is actually white paint down and then you actually filter different colors through a tube um, which is a little bit i wouldn't say it's an advanced technique but it's not the basics of acrylic pouring and then another technique that I've really enjoyed doing, and this again is my practice piece, as you can tell from the back, and this was from our last acrylic pouring session, was teaching people how to do the feather pour. And again, this is definitely not, I would say this is a little bit advanced because you do have to have a certain way of doing it. You can see my first one that I tried, my feather isn't mm, as nice as I'd like it. But by the time I got round to the little baby one, I was able to figure out how to get this action going there so it looked like a true feather. Um, it does take practice, it does take patience, and it takes a lot of workspace for drying. You want to always let your pieces cure for at least three weeks before you put the resin on. Otherwise, the paint is not actually dry underneath um, when you're doing this. So three weeks to let it cure. Okay, now I use the masking tape and the wax paper, but for the wooden coasters that I'm doing today, I actually used one of my die cuts to cut the sticky paper. I think we call it tack paper. We used to cover our school books with it. And I just used my die cut, which fit perfectly. So this has a shiny side to it, which will now remain protected when I paint on this side. The other thing that I've done with my wooden, so I have my four right here. The other thing that I've done with my wooden coasters is I've come in with a very thin coat of Pentop primer gesso. And the reason I've done that is because it is wood and you do want your surface to be primed. I could have um, done black gesso if I wanted darker colors, I chose to go with white. So your basic tools that you need when you are paint pouring. Hi, Dali, I'm glad you made it. Your basic things that you need when you are paint pouring. If you have a big canvas, I suggest you go to your paint store and pick some of these up because these work great 
when you have a canvas you can put this down and you have a surface so the paint drips right off okay that's one thing I would say especially when you're working with big canvases and as you guys know I um, work with really big canvases in fact I'll actually show you something that I've done that is really really big and it's not even a canvas so I'm just gonna grab that forgot to pull it out this morning um, but this is actually an acrylic pour and I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this but this is actually done on a body form um, and it's really really big so it's a, like a life-size kind of um, body form but you have it right there and then this has had a spray um, put onto it so this has not been resin. This is just like a shellac spray or a protective spray you can get. But it's really big. I can't get it on the table. And this is just doing acrylic pour um, on there. I've still got to hang this up in my workshop. But she's absolutely gorgeous. So I really, really like her. Um, but yeah, so you can go as big as you want. <laughs> and, you know, again, it takes time and practice to know how to do your colors and where to lay them down so sorry carrying on with the tools you need all kinds of sizes of different cups um, a few here different cups I like to put cups under my um, coasters um, I find it easier you could also do the same thing with the paint sticks and you could put popsicle sticks below to let the paint drip off too I just find it easier with the coasters to be able to lift and play if I have it on here. Uh, thank you so much, um, Terry. Um, I really enjoyed pouring on her. It was a big project. <laughs> and um, the other thing you need is you want a little bit of water. I usually have mine in a bottle. You want cold tap water, not warm water. <laughs> And you want lots of um, stir sticks, big and small. Okay, so I am going to show you um, how I mix my paints so that they pour and they flow. Now, you can use lots of different um, acrylics, but the best acrylic to use is basically your regular acrylic or flow acrylic. Um, Pentar carries the um, acrylics and I like to use acrylics because they have some metallic acrylics in there which I find really hard to get in a flow acrylic. The creamy acrylics by Pentar, I would say stay away from them. They're heavy body, albeit I have used them, but you don't want to use them if you're just a beginner. So I stick with the regular um, acrylic paints. So today, I'm going to be using, I'm going to be mixing it up. I'm going to be using acrylic paint metallic by Pentart, which is this gold. I'm going to be using a glossy acrylic paint, which is a magenta. And of course, the trusty acrylic paint white, which is a matte. And the Pentart turquoise acrylic paint, which is a matte. Hi, Liliana. <laughs> I'm glad you made it. Um, the Pentard acrylic paint matte, which is turquoise. And I wanted to use these varieties, one because they're kind of my go-to colors, but also because I want to show you that um, metallic, glossy, and matte can work really, really well together. So when I do my paint pouring, I like to be ready to go, if you will. I don't like to have to mix paints on the spot. So what I do is I actually take a day out of my oh so busy schedule and I like to mix my paints and I like to pour them into these squeeze bottles. So, and I like to create my own color. So if I can't find a color, uh, in the Pentart range, then I like to just create my own color. But I have so many colors mixed. These are just a very few of them that I'm showing you. And I could use any of these colors today. Um, it doesn't really matter, but I really do want to show you the metallic and the glossy with the matte. So these are just a few of my colors. 
um, if I'm missing a light blue, I'll mix a light blue with the white and so forth. I find white is the one that you are going to go through the most. So for me, I usually have about three of these white ones on the go. Since the last workshops at the city, I have used up all my white. So right now it's just sitting in a cup. Um, so we'll just use it out the cup today. So what you need now, this is again about basics. So I'm not going to go into how to use silicone. If you were going to use silicone, um, what you will get is these kind of like caterpillar cells. And that is using the Pentart silicone. But we're not going to do that, albeit you can, when you're using white, you can create a little bit of these. But if you want like the really, really nice cells like this, um, then you're going to need to use silicone. But again, we won't be doing that in this session because it's just basics. So what you need, um, so here I have, I wanted to show you how I mix them. So here I have the Penta acrylic mat, which is white. And what I've done is I've just put it into a little cup here for you. What you're going to need again is some cold water. You can tap water, distilled water works. And you need the Penta pouring medium. Um, that's what I use when I'm at home, the Pentop Pouring Medium, but there are other mediums that are available. Okay, so the key to getting a good flow with your acrylics is for it to be like a pancake consistency. So if you have a look here, my white, it, there's no real drip to it. It's just kind of hanging there. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is um, my rule of thumb is usually a tablespoon to about six ounces of paint, about a tablespoon to about six ounces of paint. Now, please keep in mind that every paint has a different consistency, or I can't say the word viscosity. It's white paint is very heavy. It will sink to the bottom. Black paint is very light. It will sit at the top. So every paint is different. Uh, red is quite light. Blue is heavy. So every paint is different. Yellow is a very heavy paint. So when I say I take a tablespoon um, to about six ounces, it's all going to depend on the consistency of my paint. And this really is just a little bit of trial and error in the beginning. But you will get a feel for it, and um, we'll be talking more about this in the class. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get your pouring medium, and you just want to pour in a little little bit. Okay, so we've done that. And then what you want to do is you want to stir it. Now, pouring medium is a binder. So what that will do, it binds your paint together. So it doesn't crack or it doesn't graze um, when your work starts to dry. So if you have too thick paint, the upper layer will dry and the bottom won't and you can get cracking too. So now it's a little bit thinner than what it was before. So the next step that you want to do is very slowly you want to start introducing some water. Now, the reason you want to introduce it very slowly is one, because you don't want to over thin it out, albeit you can put some more white paint in this. It's because you, you want to control the bubbles also. You don't want too many bubbles. So now, as you can see, it's getting a little bit thinner, but it's still not as thin as you want it. So give this a good stir. And what you're basically going for is a very, very thin, um, if I can describe it, pancake consistency. So now you can see that it's starting to drip off. But it's still not flowing the way that I need it to. So we're going to come in with a little bit more water. And we're going to mix this up. Now, the other thing that you can use the pouring uh, medium that you have here 
from Pentart is you can actually, once it's cured for three weeks, if you don't want to use resin, you can actually use this pouring medium over your work and it will give the same sheen. The only difference is that you don't want to be putting anything too hot on it because it will stick. Resin is the only thing that you can actually use um, and that's certain resins to be able to protect it from being um, sticky or getting tacky from heat. But you can use this and it will give you the same sheen um, as I showed you earlier on these um, pieces. So where they're really, really shiny. This is resin, but pouring medium will do the same. Okay, so let's have a look how this is looking. Hi, Carolyn. Oh, well, I'm glad, I'm glad you found me now. And as you can see, this is now starting to pour off. So it's becoming very much like a, a pancake consistency. So I don't know how well you can see that. Okay, so once you've got it to that consistency where it's continuously pouring off your stick, and this one is still not too thin. So a little paint actually goes a very, very long way. So give that a good stir. And there you go. So now we have it where it's pouring off com completely. So that's the consistency you want to get it at. Okay. So let's do our pours. So I have one here that I've poured quite a bit here where I've already mixed it. And sometimes I like to, it to sit. So I did this just before I started the live. I like it to sit because it gets rid of the bubbles. Okay, so, and if you find by the time you do get to it, it's a little bit thick, you just want to um, add a little bit of water to it. So let's start with the pour. So let's start with the very first one, shall we? So I always like to take my cup and we're going to go in the same color kind of combination so you can see the way the different pores work on all of them. I'll just bring this down a little bit. So let's start now for me. Um, because I like the, I like to have kind of a bit of white showing and I like it kind of because it sinks down and you can sometimes get cells with it. I'm going to start with a little bit of white. So I'm just going to actually put this here so you can see the order that I'm going in. I don't know what order I'm going in yet, but I'm, I'm going to do it as we go along. I do know I want white at the bottom. <laughs> um, once you, you can go online and you can learn all about the paints, um, you can actually manipulate how your pour turns out to a certain extent, uh, but you're never going to get the same thing again. Because um, if you know the weight of the paints, the viscosity or however you say it, or the consistency of your paints, you can pour them to manipulate how they will fall. For instance, I'm using the white first because I know that will sink and my other colors will pop through. Um, with the black, I know that won't sink, so I don't want that as my first paint because that black will sit on the rest of my colors. So there is a little bit of homework in learning how to do this. So we're just gonna come in and we're just gonna put in a little bit of white. Now, as you can see, as I showed you my um, life-size bodice form, um, you can go as big as you want. And usually my canvases start at anywhere from 16 to 20 um inches like i do big big pores like really big pores um so i said i was gonna do a little bit of i was gonna bring in a little bit of the um gold so first i'm gonna come in i think well let's do a little bit of blue and just pull this in i honestly don't know how this is gonna turn out so you guys will have to bear with me and then let's do a little bit of the gold. And then I'm just gonna do, oopsie daisy, just a smidge of the black because um, black is quite overpowering. And then for this one, um, is we're gonna, it's called the upside down pour. Uh, 
it's an upside down dirty pour actually because you've kind of it's a dirty cup now you've just poured everything into it so I th i'm looking at it and i'm thinking mm, i got too much white in there but that's okay because we'll just play it by ear so this side remember has a transparent paper on it so i'm pouring on the wooden side of it so what you want to do is you want to do this and then you're gonna pray that it works out and then you just want to put it down here oh another staple to have all the time is your heat tool um so you can take out any bubbles uh paper towel and uh lots of baby wipes which i have with me thank goodness okay so Liza, i'm just going to bring this up to the camera and what you want to do is you just want to gently lift that off okay and then you have your pour. See, I've already lost some of that white. And then all you're going to do is you're just going to tilt this around. And as you can see, that's got too much blue in it for my liking. So this does get messy. But I do like those white cells that are forming there. So I'm going to put this down so that I can continue um, getting some of those white cells. So if we do this will bring some of that white back into here. So for me, this is just too blue. Now, the good news about this is that you can wash it off and you can start again. But that isn't so good for the environment. So this is what you call a dirty pour with those three colors. Okay, so there's your very first one. So flip cup dirty pour and you can continue to manipulate this if you want more of that white, I've kind of lost my gold there. So I'm going to bring some of that gold back in here. So for this one, yeah, I would say too much blue. So just eyeball it. And there's your very first one. So that is what you call a dirty pour. So that's what it looks like. Okay. So note to self, less blue. So the next one, what we're going to do is called the tree ring pour. And with the tree ring pour, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start with, uh, let me bring that right here so you can see. So what we're going to do, we're gonna start off with the white again, just like this. We're gonna go easy on the blue this time very easy on the blue because we know that this um, really overpowered everything and i think then we went with the gold and i think then we went with the uh, a smidge of black so with the tree ring pour what you're doing is it's nice to have a softer medicine cup like this all you're going to do is you're going to bring this down and you're just going to gently move your hand back and forth like this, not back and forth in round circles. This has got to be one of my favorite pours because I just love the effect that it gives. But you can see that metallic magenta, uh, the metallic gold. I don't know where I got magenta from. That blue is really overpowering. Sometimes I think the cup looks better than the actual pour. So here we go. And all you're going to do is you're going to tilt this around. Now, that blue is very overpowering. I think I'm just so used to working with bigger pieces that you really have to try and figure out and try and gauge um, how much paint to use and what colors. So again, if you're not liking what you're seeing, just pull it down until you get it to where you want it to be. 
So I'm just going to let this keep coming down, keep coming down till I want it where I want it to be. And then finish off your sides always. Just pick up the paint at the bottom because you want a finished piece, obviously. Okay. Might have to do that upside down pour again. I think I have a spare tile here. I'm just not liking that. The beauty of Facebook Lives. So here we have the tree ring pour. So you can see that gorgeous magenta. Uh, I don't know why I keep calling it magenta. The metallic is just absolutely gorgeous on there. I don't know if you can catch the sheen on there. And then you have the black peeking through. And then you have some white and that ever so power empowering blue that we have so that is called your tree ring pour so now we have two where we've gone with the same colors so you know that the set looks cohesive so let's just move that one over put that one there okay next one that we're going to do is grab myself another cup this is called basically it's just a straight pour this now this just gets a little bit boring because this is just your typical um straight pour so we're going to do the same thing we're going to come in with some white and for this demo, I'm intentionally going with the exact same colors every time in the same order so I can show you what it looks like. Oopsie daisy, that was lots of gold. And with this one, all you're doing is you're just basically just pouring it however you want to. Oh, look at that cup. See? Look how nice that is. And then you just, again, you're just doing your tilting action. Um, but you can tell that they're all from the same color palette. And this is a kind of look you get when you're just coming in and you're just doing like a, dir a, a dirty pour, like a straight pour, I should say. So then you have that when you see the sheen on that beautiful metallic. I got it right, the metallic. So there you have that one. So now you have three. There we go. Hi, Debbie. So now you have three there. Okay. Then that's my favorite one so far. I'm glad I poured lots of gold into that. And then with your last one. I'm going to come in and do that dirty pour again because it's just bothering me so much that it's too blue. But then people that know me know that I'm kind of like that. I have to have it a certain way. <laughs> the next one is where you do a pour, but then you do a ribbon effect on it. So actually, yes, let's do that. So we're just coming back in with the white. Now, normally I change the order that I put my colors in. My white is always first to go, but I normally um, change the way my colors go because I just like to do that. And then I get to learn how the colors work and interact with each other. So here's the white. Here's some blue. I'm really liking that gold and black, so we're going to come in with a lot of gold. And then we're going to come in with um, some black. And with this one, um, you can again just pour this down however you want. Like this. Oh, I'm loving that gold. It's just so gorgeous. Okay, and then when you have that down, your base down, what you want to do is you can come in and you can do like a little ribbon. So you want to come off the edge 
and you can do a ribbon like that so you just want to come off the edge and then you just want to go around like that okay so that's what you do it's called a ribbon pour over an already poured piece now the one that now you can see little bits popping up so those are air bubbles um, I'm gonna bring that up to see if you guys can see that there's little uh, speckles in there they're little air bubbles so what you can do with that is you can bring your heat tool to it and now hence you will see why my heat tool is so dirty uh, with paint all over it and you can actually pop out your bubbles like this now you you I'll wait till I'm done Sorry, I started talking while the heat gun was on and we know that doesn't always go over so well. You can use the heat gun to manipulate a little bit of movement, but um, thank you, Martin. Um, and hello, Martin. Um, but really the reason you use the heat tool is so the paint doesn't go everywhere. You couldn't do that with a hairdryer. So I did manipulate a little bit for my cells. So you can see it right there, some of those cells popping through. They're not true cells because we've not used any silicone oil. But so here's the last one using a ribbon pour. You could leave the ribbon pour as it is. Uh, thank you, Martin. Um, or you can take the heat tool to it. So I am quite pleased with my um, ribbon pour technique over a plain pour. I'm quite happy with my plain pour technique. As you know, I'm not happy, and I'm happy with my ring pour technique. I'm not happy with this pour. So because this is still wet, I'm gonna see if I can do something, which I've not done before, but you know what? That's what Facebook Lives are all about, playing and practicing with everybody. So I'm gonna take a fresh cup here. And let's see if we can't change this pour up a little bit so it doesn't have so much blue. So again, we're going to come in with a little bit of the white. So we've just got the white in here, just a little bit of the white. And this time I'm going to go with very little blue. But now I'm thinking I've got too much white in there, very little blue. Then we're going to come in with our beautiful gold. I bet you now this one's going to be way too white. And then we're going to come in with our black. And what we're going to do, we're going to attempt to um, do the <laughs> flip pour on a wet coaster. So here goes. Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows? But I'm glad you guys are still here and uh, watching me uh, try to fix my uh, very first coaster. So let's give it a lucky tap. One, two, three, and see what it looks like. Oh. Yay, way better, way better. So we have less of that blue. I'm just gonna pour some of that off. I like that gold in there and I like that black. So yes, it's a lot of paint wasted on this one. Be not wasted because uh, I will resin these and they will become gifts. Now this one would probably take about four weeks to dry because I've got paint under it. Now I would have gone and washed that um, originally um, if I was doing it and it wasn't a Facebook Live. But you can see now where all the little white dots are. That's where the white paint has sunk in and created a barrier from the other colors around it. So if I wanted to make those bigger, as I was saying earlier, you can take your heat tool and you can manipulate them and make them a little bit bigger and make them really pop. So there you have it. Um, these four coasters, um, you can tell they're from the same family. 
um, I use the exact same colors in the exact same order, but that's not how you have to do it. You don't have to do them in the order that I did them. You can switch up the orders that you did them in. So I really love paint pouring. And the reason because for me is it's very organic. You don't know what you're gonna get. You can go back in like I did, as you saw. That was a great example of if you don't like it, just go back over it and give it three weeks to dry. But I find it, for me, it's my go-to stress reliever because you can't go wrong because no matter what you do, um, it's always gonna turn out really, really nice. So I'm just gonna actually um, move these off onto here. And then I can, you can actually see what they actually look like um, without all that paint behind it. And the other thing that you want to do is always do it on a wax paper or a parchment paper because all this leftover yumminess here, once that dries, you can peel it off. And I like to put it into jewelry um, so some metal um, findings and then you put you can cut put this down put it into your pendant and put some glass over it I like to use it for die cutting for card making scrapbooking um, there's so many different things you can do with the um, different skins uh, acrylic skins that's what they're called um, once they've dried but now you get to see um, I'll show you one by one so this was the dirty pour that we re no this was not the dirty pour that we did this was just taking your four colors and just pouring them straight down thanks leslie um this was just taking your four colors and just pouring them straight down we went white blue gold black okay so that was that one This one is called the tree ring pour, where you go in a little round motion. Again, white, blue, gold, black, and you can definitely see the metallic in there. And this one was just going in with a straight pour, but creating a ribbon effect. So you can see the ribbon effect there that you've created. And that's just by squeezing the beak of your cup and then the final one that we had to do again is the upside down dirty pour and i'm just loving it i'm loving that sheen that i'm getting from that metallic so there you have it for beautiful coasters already thinking who do i want to give these to after i've resin them i really really hope you enjoyed this again I wanted to just go back to basics because I start my classes again on Saturday for five weeks in a row every Saturday of um, acrylic pouring at the city. So I hope this was information was um, helpful. I, I hope that you guys will go and dabble with this and have some fun. But I really like all four coasters. I think they're beautiful. I think they go together really well. <laughs> I don't think they'll go in this house. It might go in my bedroom though, because my bedroom's uh, a teal um, color. Um, so they might go there. But there you have it. Have fun. Don't be afraid. Um, really, when you look at how much mess I made, um, these are my hands, but you can wear gloves. Uh, I only use this one piece of paper towel and four cups. But like I said, if you really want to do this and you want a stress reliever or grab a glass of wine or a cup of tea or coffee or whatever your uh, drink of choice is, um, have your paints ready to go. Pre-mix them, put them into bottles so that they are ready to go. Just grab and go. And that way um, I find I tend to acrylic paint or fluid art more because it's already ready to go where I think I would be a little bit hesitant to just start and throw a canvas on the table and start pouring if I had to mix the paint every time I sat down to do it. But there you have it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, the products that we use, we didn't use a Pentart silicone because this was a basic class. We use a pouring medium by Pentart. And the colors that I played with today, and I've forgotten my black. 
um, I was going to play with the magenta, we didn't get to that, is the acrylic paint pentart metallic um, antique gold. You see that right there in the paints. The acrylic paint matte turquoise by pentart. And then of course our trusty white matte. And um, I didn't use a glossy, but really the glossy would show up as glossy. So if you weren't covering it with resin, you would have some really nice little shiny accents to your piece. But there you have it. And uh, I hope you really enjoyed it. And I will see a lot of you tonight for the mixed media classes. They've started up again for the next uh, four or five weeks. And I'll see some of you on Saturday. And thank you so much. And a big shout out again to Simply Scrapbooking for hosting their biannual retreat. It was amazing. I think we ended up doing like 30, 40 projects. I did that in two days. Oh my goodness, three days, sorry. And um, it was just a blast. And thank you, like I said, for people coming all the way from Dawson Creek, Vanderhoof, Quinnell, uh, you name it. Uh, it's just an amazing response. And I'll see you ladies all in May. And that's it for me. So it's kind of over and out. I am now going to go prep for my class tonight and go wash my dirty hands. Okay, have any questions? Let me know. Have an amazing, amazing day. And I will talk to you all very soon. See you next Tuesday.